doing something for the first time, taking advantage of this new resource. You don't always know what you don't know. And over time, what we learned about methane emissions as it relates to natural gas is very, very scary. I think the Obama administration tried to be very conscious of all the implications of the shale revolution. Did it turn out we had it wrong? Abs absolutely. But at the time, we didn't know that it was wrong. And it's, it's not like we didn't have some of the best scientific minds in the country working on that. Can we talk about generally who funded the MIT Energy Initiative? Not necessarily that report. Uh, no. Let, no. Let's. No. Let, let's 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 just end uh, the interview. Okay. No. I mean, if you want to paint that as some kind of black spot, well, go ahead. Ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. Look at the output, not the input. And you're continuing to perpetrate a corporate culture that is not coming to grips with the climate crisis. That's a failure of, of, of leadership. Unlike major European oil companies, ExxonMobil is not planning to develop solar and wind energy. Instead, it's working on ways to capture rather than emit CO2. Carbon capture and storage can remove more than 90% of CO2 emissions from these carbon-intensive sectors. ExxonMobil estimates there will be a $4 trillion annual market for carbon capture and storage by 2050. history of doing what they need to to protect their interests. And, uh, you know, they can be ruthless. That's, that's a, a fact. The Cornell professors were criticized by other universities, including the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. That year, the influential MIT Energy Initiative published a study on the future of natural gas, mainly funded by Aubrey McClendon's Clean Skies Foundation. The Future Natural Gas Study at MIT, I think we were ahead of the curve in uh, talking about the forthcoming uh, shale gas uh, revolution. Methane emissions uh, are, are a, a very important greenhouse gas that needs to be addressed. It's just that methane emissions from the oil and gas industry are actually a minority of methane emissions. Uh, fortunately, in contrast to carbon dioxide, uh, methane has a relatively short uh, lifetime in the atmosphere. Uh, that doesn't mean one should ignore it. It means that one better eliminate new emissions. The study promoted gas as a bridge fuel to a lower carbon future. It also criticized the Cornell Methane Report as unsubstantiated. Ernest Moniz insists industry funding did not influence these conclusions. The funding was part of a wider strategy by the fossil fuel industry. By 2012, oil and gas companies were pumping hundreds of millions of dollars into departments at prestigious academic institutions across America. The point is, we always believe in transparency, and, and so that's 